Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here on the first day of Sukkot. That's right, we are tabernacling today. And as part of my testimony, I want to let you guys know that we actually woke up to rain today. The last time we had rain around here, you actually heard it in a video. And I actually can't remember how long that was ago. It's been several months since we've gotten rain. But here on the first day of Tabernacles, we actually woke up to thunder and a little bit of rain. So we were sure to get our palm branches out to walk around rejoicing, hoping that we'll get more rain. If you stick around, you can hear that at the end of this video. But I really wanted to come over and talk about rain, specifically the latter rain. Like we see there talked about in Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. You have to remember that our Father is He who provides our rain. But apparently the rest of the world has forgotten that. I say that because over here in chapter 14, where it's talking about the day of the Lord and how there will be those who will come against Jerusalem in the last days. That's what the book of Revelation is talking about when it said that they will fight against those who keep the commandments. For some reason, they're going to blame this drought and everything on us. But we learn in Zechariah 14 that that's not going to work out for them at all. So we're not worried. We see down here in verse 12 what actually happens to those that fight against Jerusalem. It says, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. It says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Now, I, like a lot of people, have always thought this was the result of a nuclear bomb or something like that. But as I was reading it to my wife earlier today, Stacy said, this sounds like monkeypox. Like where it's talking about the flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So this is definitely some something that's eating their flesh, consuming their eyes and their tongues, being consumed away in their mouth. But notice how up there it says that it's a plague. So that doesn't sound like nuclear at all. So I believe she's right. I believe this could be some type of plague related to what they're talking about monkeypox. But I don't know enough about monkeypox to say for sure, but it's definitely interesting. But anyway, look at verse 13. It says, It shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. So this is actually talking about war here. I probably should have talked about this whole verse here. Like back up there in verse 7 where it says but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord not day nor night but it shall come to pass that at even in time it shall be light verse 6 says it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark this I believe is actually talking about the pole shift see how it's light in the evening time this reminds me of what we read over in the book of Revelation, where it says a third part of the sun was smitten and a third part of the moon and a third part of the stars and a third part of them was darkened and the day was shown not for a third part of it. And the night likewise, this is actually losing eight hours of the day. Eight hours of this particular day is disappearing. Well, that's consistent with what Zachariah is saying over here when it's saying that we're going to have daylight at evening time or at sunset or at 6 p.m. which is normally sunset it's still going to be light outside but anyway I'm getting a little bit off track the reason why I bring that up is it could be related to this Russian war I was listening to a channel Maverick Star Unloaded and that was that the Russians are doing a land grab trying to escape the pole shift in other words Russia is about to become the North Pole and in order to feed their people, they're moving them out into other parts of the world. But anyway, we'll cover all that in another class. We was talking about the Feast of Tabernacles and rain. So let's come down to verse 16 where it says, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. 
But then notice verse 17 says, And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And so this is talking about a drought, which is kind of like where we're at now. Turns out almost half of the country is in a drought and there's other parts of the world that is in a drought too. So these would be the parts of the world that do not come up to worship the king at the Feast of Tabernacles. But then notice down here in verse 18, it says, And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not to have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's that plague that we was talking about earlier that was eating people's flesh away is the result of not keeping tabernacles. So I understand this is a lot of speculation, but could monkeypox be tied to the drought and be all the result of not keeping the Feast of Tabernacles? Verse 19 says, This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's why we're talking about this because, like I said, we're now in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. It started today on October the 12th, even last evening at sunset, and will last all the way to October the 19th. So if you're just finding out about this, it's not too late to partake in this festival. You have to remember all of this is a dress rehearsal for the years of tabernacling that will take place here in the near future. And you can imagine there will be some that will show up late to that party. Well, if you're just finding out about it now, maybe you should start reading your scripture, praying, repenting, and making your offerings made by fire, like we read about over there in the book of Sirach, chapter 35. And your apocrypha, it will be Ecclesiasticus. Pause your screen and check out those scriptures, or go look at a video that we just did on the subject. And I'm going to get back to the party. You can hear Dirac Albar in the background. I'm going to go join the family for the rest of the feast. Oh, and here's our palm waving ceremony from earlier in the day. It's a little bit noisy as we were walking through dry leaves, but I think you'll get the idea of how that ceremony went down. All right, so we're here on the first day of Sukkot, first day of tents. What kind of branches we got? Moringa and Moringa and oak. We got loquat and apple. Loquat and apple. Peach and crab apple. Peach and crab apple. Lemon. Lemon. Got a fig and a horn. Fig and a horn. We ain't got no mulberry. Yeah, we ain't got no. Mulberry. There's the mulberry. Well, then I got mulberry and I got the smallest palm branch in the world. Well, the smallest palm branch in the Feast of Sukkot. I don't think anybody's walking around with this small little branch. But we are, because it's a palm branch. Sign of victory. Anybody want to say a prayer before we go or say it when we get back? Say it when we get back. Say it when we get back. This is a day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will shower his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. 
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We ask you to 
look down on our festival, Lord, to honor our feast as we honor you, Lord. We ask you to show us what it is that we're supposed to be doing, both physically and spiritually throughout this feast. We ask you to guide us in your ways and in your paths. We thank you, Father, for the rain that you've given us today, and we ask you to continue to give us rain. Um, as you say in your word, these feast days will get us rain, so we thank you for what we've received, and we look forward to uh, more rain over the course of the week and over the course of um, in these latter times, in these latter days. In the Son's name we pray, amen. Amen. And so be it. Hallelujah. Tabernacles. Tabernacles.